Of the Silver Falls School, School Board in order. I'd like to welcome our visitors tonight. Please join me for the flag salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, we're going to start by having a uh, opening a public hearing regarding the findings of fact for exemption from the competitive bidding for the use of construction manager, manager construction contractor for the uh, seismic uh, rehabilitation project at Victor Point School. Would anybody like to speak to this? All right, seeing none, I'll go ahead and close the hearing for that. Next, we have a uh, consent agenda. Do we have a motion to accept the consent agenda? Move for approval. All second. Move and second it. Any further discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. All right, I'd like to go ahead and invite our student reps up. Tell us what's going on at Silverton High. Good evening. Uh, first, our girls soccer players, um, they got second in state against LaSalle, and they played at Hillsboro Stadium on Saturday, so that was really exciting. They made history on that day, so we're excited for them. Our boys soccer team did very well and made it to the first round of playoffs. Interact Club has had a food drive for the past two weeks, I believe, and today was the last day for canned donations. Our cross-country team, the boys got first in league this year, so that was, that was pretty cool. On November 1st, Red Cross Club um, hosted our first blood drive of the year. There will be two more coming up in, um, in the spring, and that went very well. We had uh, an especially large number of donors that came in. Hmm. For the She is Safe Club, today after school they made bracelets um, to fundraise. Uh, this past week, ASB um, put on the Macho Volleyball Tournament, and the teachers ended up winning. This was the first year that the teachers had put together a team, and they won the whole thing. <laughs> and they played against our varsity volleyball girls, and they didn't win against them, but they surprised everyone. And this Thursday um, is our cardboard boat races, and once again, the proceeds will be going towards the Tree of Giving. So today, all trout started for winter sports. Go Foxes. Any more questions? No, thanks. I, I got a comment about, um, about the soccer game. It was one of the best games yeah. that went to penalty kicks. Yeah, like uh -huh. yeah. Sunday, that was crazy. Fantastic. That was intense. <laughs> huge student turnout again. Mm -hmm. yeah. We always have a huge amount of students that always turn out. They're mm -hmm. pretty, pretty neat thing to see that. Yeah, they didn't have any student section. My son hates soccer, and he, he loved the game. Yeah. <laughs> so, it was good. Right. It was a good game. You know, and I do want to piggyback on those comments. Um, for those of you that don't know, our Lady Fox soccer team, in order to make the state finals, they had to have, play a play-in game. And they played the number six team in the state, right, mm -hmm. which is Springfield, yep. beat Springfield. They then had to go to the quarterfinal and play number three, Ben, mm -hmm. Vanquish Ben. They then had to play the number two team in the state, Summit. Summit for the last couple mm -hmm. years has either what made it to the state finals or, or won. Mm -hmm. Beat Summit. And then they played LaSalle number one. Mm -hmm. They took LaSalle all the way to the end, extra 20 minute uh, overtime period, ended up in penalty kicks where we fell just a little bit short. So, mm -hmm. um, having been a proud parent of my daughter who's played varsity soccer <laughs> for four years, shameless plug, <laughs> uh, and, and watching the program evolve, it's been amazing. Uh, the leadership, the coaching, uh, the girls that have been playing soccer for many years on that team, fantastic. The, uh, uh, charisma, the tenacity in which they attack the game has been just unbelievable. And uh, very proud of the girls. Mm -hmm. And extremely, as everyone mentioned, our student body has been amazing. Uh, when we had to travel to Bend for two, or for actually two games in one week, the student body that followed the girls to cheer them on outnumbered the, kid, the local kids. So that in and of itself says a lot about mm -hmm. Silverton High School. And for the Bend game, uh, we had an opportunity for one Reuter bus, and we ended up having so many students sign up that we got two Reuter buses. Amazing. So yes. we were very proud of that. Awesome. So, yeah, so kudos to uh, Silverton soccer girls and kudos to Silverton High School. Thank right. you. Thank you. Thanks for coming.
Okay, next we'll go ahead and move on with audience with visitors. I'm going to go ahead and start out reading a statement. Um, we'd like to welcome you to the regular business meeting of the Silver Falls School Board. We are glad you're here and welcome you to address the board at this time. Please be certain to sign in before you present. There's a sign-in sheet right up here. In order to ensure equity among speakers, the board will limit remarks to three minutes per individual. If a group of three or more wishes to appoint a representative to speak on its behalf, the board will extend the time of remarks to five minutes. There's a second audience with visitors that will occur later in the agenda, specific to discussion and, and action items of this meeting. So with that, would anybody like to address the board this evening? I first wanted to thank you all for giving me you, the please, opportunity. Sorry, could you state your name? And Gabriela Rodriguez. Thank you. Yeah, I just want to thank you all for giving me the opportunity to speak. So, um, as a student who experienced harassment at Silverton High School on November 8th, people might not believe me and people might disagree with me, but the truth is I'm neither lying or making things up. I was asked if I was ready to leave back to Mexico during the Trump rally at Silverton High School. I want people to understand that I, I accept everyone's opinion. If that's political or religious, I accept every opinion that's out there. I believe that the majority of those who were in the Trump rally had good intentions, but because this was a free speech rally, very few people took advantage of that free speech and turned it into discrimination or racism. This is why this issue can't be dropped or let go. It is something that was, taken, that was not taken seriously and could have put the dangers of students due to how students reacted to this rally. I was terrified to go to school today because I'm currently being cyberbullied due to being on TV. I was told, sometimes you just have to block those people out, but it has affected me in many ways. And words were put into my mouth, and these are words that were never said by me, which have now become awful rumors that people believe. So I hope people take this in consideration, help us deal with this issue to prevent it from ever happening again. All right, thank you. Any questions? I just want to say I'm really sorry that that happened to you. It's unfortunate. I think every one of us here is, is saddened by the, the actions of those individuals. And uh, just extend to you that it's really unfortunate. I'm really sorry that it happened to you. We want to build an environment that's respectful of all, everybody. And we can respect, respect each other's opinion and, and each, each individual as well. Thank you. So thanks for coming. Thanks for sharing. Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> Anybody else? Hello, my name is Inez Bradford. Um, I live here in Silverton. So I'm just gonna piggyback a little bit onto what she said. Um, the morning after the rally, a few of us moms came to the school just with some concerns. The principal was great to invite us in and have a, had a very candid and open conversation with us that we really appreciated. Um, our main concern was um, a lack of reaction or an underreaction. We felt like that would send a stronger tone than an overreaction to what had happened. Um, but unfortunately, we feel like the, uh, their reaction was um, not taken seriously. We heard many reports from staff, including students, that after they were met with the day, uh, the day after the incident, that um, it felt glossed over, that the word racism was used once, that it was a let's not be mean, guys, to the students. And they all left feeling, well, it, uh, that wasn't dealt with, that it was dealt with poorly. So also including statements, um, from the school that were very weak compared to other cities like Lake Oswego that is dealing with something similar. Our statements were uh, that this is a teachable moment. Okay, so it's children getting harassed are a teachable moment. However, other schools are, are calling it for what it is, harassment, um, the precursors to hate crimes. Uh, so that's what I'm concerned about is what's the next step beyond this. Um, they had opportunities to really draw a fine line on both ends not just uh, minority kids being picked on. We're talking about all kids getting picked on. No matter what side of the, they are on, that's what I'm concerned about. And we are looking for a, a fine line drawn in the sand um, from the staff, from the school district, um, to let parents know that we can feel confident that they're handling things correctly. So. Right, question, questions for Gabriela? 
All right, thank you. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? My name is Elizabeth Neves. I am a Silverton resident. I have four children. Uh, one is at Silverton High School and two have already graduated. I'm going to read you a letter that I wrote to uh, the principal, Mr. Blando, and Dandy Parsons on the day that this happened. As a licensed professional counselor working at Oregon State Hospital, I serve one of the most vulnerable populations in our state, convicted, severely, persistently, mentally ill patients. A vital piece of the training involved in this work is multicultural and diversity competency. All state workers are required to attend, training for, participate in, and demonstrate multicultural diversity awareness, sensitivity, and competencies. As a counselor, I listen to stories of life-changing events, including instances of discrimination, intolerance, and trauma. And I do believe you just heard one of those stories. The events which began with a planned political rally on school campus last week proved to be traumatic to multiple students and adults and only highlighted an ongoing problem. Words and opinions cloaked as freedom of speech often result from a lack of diversity training and education. Freedom of speech is not hateful remarks like pack your bags, you're leaving tomorrow, and tell your family goodbye, being shouted. <coughs> Language can be the weaponry that assaults, isolates, and negatively alters self-identity or bonds us in compassionate common humanity. Language together with actions and attitude can be the backdrop for a person to feel belonging and encouraged or disrespected and defeated. Even well-intentioned people use words and phrases that communicate hostility, derogatory attitudes, or negative racial ethnic slights can cause adverse self-identity. You and the Silver Falls School District are working with another vulnerable population, our children. I understand that you treat this responsibility with great respect, and I thank you for that. However, what was witnessed and expressed here recently by students under the guise of freedom of speech is not acceptable, and worse, sets the stage for harm to be done to students developing identities. In this age of research and attention to the negative effects of trauma on child development, you would best serve the community providing a thorough and ongoing trauma-informed cultural competency <coughs> training series. The process of best practice training is through experiential, relationship-based teaching, building the foundation that we are at once alike and beautifully different. Together, students and staff may foster collaboration and encouragement of insight and reflection about the language and attitudes that we use on a daily basis. A comprehensive training opportunity will help heal the damage for our school and community and put us in the forefront of positive news, fostering humility, community, and promoting understanding, something that our children and Silverton at large will thrive under. I do appreciate your time and I have ideas and training logs that we use at Oregon State Hospital. We sit toe to toe every day with a variety of population. So courageous conversations need to happen. It's not a one and done. It's not an assembly and then everyone's fine. All right, thank you. Any questions? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anybody else like to address the board? Yes. Do 
you mind if I give you a handout? That'd be great. That'd be okay. Yeah. Thank you. I do have an extra one. Nobody? Okay. Good evening. My name is Shelley Nealon. I live at 425 Tillicum Drive here in Silverton in Abaqua Heights. Um, I have three children. Uh, one is a junior at the high school, and my other two are in eighth grade and seventh grade, and they eventually will be coming to the high school um, within the year, I suppose. Um, I am here to read a statement that I made, um, and this is in reflection to what has happened last week, um, and I haven't talked to Mr. Llewellyn, I haven't talked to anybody else, but there was one thing that struck me to the core that I had to come and speak to you tonight. I am here tonight to express my shock and disappointment in one of our Silver Falls School District board members, Todd White. Mr. White has been long known among Silverton area Facebook users to be a cyberbully, calling people names and using threatening language when he does not agree with a person's point of view. Here is one example of many. <clears throat> Trump won, accept it and shut up about it and let's move on. These delusional anti-Trump people are a disgrace to America. He is your president too. In the student code of conduct, right here, this booklet right here, I'm not sure if any of you have this booklet. We do, it's right in front okay, of us actually. Great, <laughs> terrific. I didn't have to grab any from the counseling office. <laughs> terrific. Um, in there, and if you go in on, you can look on my sheet or you can go into the second page in there, uh, the rights and responsibilities of students at our school. Um, the student code of conduct Every year, our students have to sign a code of conduct in which they commit to act with civility toward their fellow students, their teachers, their administrators, and community members, to know and obey school rules and regulations, to treat all staff, school staff members and classmates with respect, to respect the rights and property of school personnel, fellow students, and the public in general. If they are caught bullying someone either physically, verbally, or over the internet, there are consequences. And if you'd like to read about those consequences, you can refer to the guidelines for student conduct booklet and the student handbook that we have here. The board conduct, the board code of conduct. Individual board members and the board as a public entity must comply with the code of ethics for public officials <laughs> provided in state law. Board members will treat board members, the superintendent, staff, and public with dignity and courtesy and will provide an opportunity for all parties to be heard with due respect for their opinions. A board member will utilize social media and other forms of electronic communication do judiciously by not posting confidential information about students, staff, or district business. Board members will treat fellow board members, staff, students, and the public with respect while posting and will adhere to Oregon public meetings laws when communicating with other board members via social media or other electronic means. 
Our school board members' actions are guided a similar code in which they agree to treat board members, the superintendent, staff, and the public with dignity. These codes are particularly important at a time like now when students have recently harassed one another due to conflicts over the election. It is at these times that we particularly need excellent leadership and demonstrations of how to treat one another. Our board member, Todd White, demonstrates neither the leadership skills nor temperament our students should aspire to. Silver Falls District voters elected their school board members in good faith and trust that they will act and respond in a professional, ethical, moral, and proactive behavior to better all students, administrators, teachers, and parents. Mr. White, you should follow the actions of our principal, Mr. Llewellyn, in promoting more positive solutions to bring our students to and town together versus spending your time on Facebook denigrating those you disagree with. We need to teach and show our children that there are civil ways to discuss differences, communicating with each other with dignity and respect. I implore the board to take a look at these messages he has sent out and censor this behavior. In doing so, this will send a message of solidarity amongst the board members that they are putting the children first. That we come together as a community to work through these rough times. And as the Romans 14, 19 said, so when we pursue the things which make for our peace and the building up of one another. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any questions for Shelley? Thanks for coming. Thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. Would anybody else like to address the board? All right. Seeing none, we'll go ahead and move on. Well, yes. Can I just say one thing? Real quick? Sure. I just wanted to <clears throat> wanted to say really quick that as a board, as a board, and I know our administration takes these situations really, really seriously. And um, I mean, I've been doing this a long time, and I, I know our administrators pretty well and, and how they work. And I know they, they work hard every day to keep a lid on, on things like this happening. And you know, not even, not even just in this situation, but the bullying and everything that goes on, they're, they're very, trying to be very sensitive to that, and they want to be very sensitive to that. And I don't think this is going to, you know, I don't want to speak for them. But I feel like I can in saying that I don't think this is going to be a, a one and done type of conversation. You know, I think that this is, they're going to be very attentive to this, to this moving forward. Not only this situation, but every situation, you know, other situations that arise too. I think they're, they're just going to be very attentive to it. They always have been and, and they always will, you know, they're just, they work really hard at this stuff. And I just, I just felt like I wanted to say that, that just to try to, to reassure everybody that you know, it is taken seriously, and things are things are being done, and and will continue to be done. So, thanks, thanks, Tim. Yeah, yeah, I want to hear here, Tim. Um, I, and I, <clears throat> this isn't the kind of thing that's going to be one and done. I really that that's and um, I've been following it closely, but I've only been getting second and third hand information. You know, I've um, I have a couple students there. Um, I wasn't there. I didn't get to witness it. Um, and, but it is very serious, and, and um, yeah, I, I think we just got to keep the conversation going. And there's going to be differences of opinion, but but we've got to maintain a respectful environment. And I, I know our administration will work on that. And even when the election stuff dies down, there, you know, there's there'll still be bullying things going on, yep. and stuff like this happens. And so, but I know they're always very attentive <coughs> to it, and I know they'll continue to be so. The pro one of the problems right now is emotions are pretty high on both sides. Oh, yeah. It, it, it really needs to. I just want to uh, commend our community members who, who, who kind of stood up on Silverton's behalf last week, kind of after all this, uh, these eight things went down. And just uh, commend, I know some of them are here, just speaking up and saying, you know, this isn't Silverton. Uh, it's, and it's unfortunate that, and I'll say a few because it's a handful, it's not anybody in this room, it's a handful of folks that that unfortunately brought, did some terrible things and brought horrible attention to, to Silverton. Stuff we don't need because we know we're better than that. We know our community is strong. 
and that we are a tight-knit community and to have folks uh, a few students that did this um, it's very unfortunate but I commend the, the the community members who came out in support just to, 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 to hold up signs and, and, and as passers-by went by and even to the news just this is not Silverton um, and this is not how how we want to be And I know it's encouraged me and I think we all have to kind of look at this these events that have gone on this week and and even challenge ourselves because I think most of us all here are parents right and we have to, to make sure that we're starting at home to um, ensure that we're teaching our kids the right way, the right way to respond to things. Uh, I'm not perfect. Uh, I don't respond to things perfectly. I've made a lot of mistakes as a parent. And uh, I know this incident has really challenged me as a parent to make sure that, um, that we are setting the tone at home, that these behaviors are not acceptable, and, and that uh, any type of racial um, hatred or belittling or any type of stuff like that is, is not acceptable. Uh, I know it's not acceptable in my home, it's not acceptable in your home, it's not acceptable here in Silver Falls School District. Thank you. Thanks, Aaron. Okay, we move on to discussion items. Um, next is the uh, draft findings of fact for the exemption of uh, competitive bidding for CMGC for the seismic rehabilitation project at uh, Victor Point. Any questions or comments on that before we move on? It's an action item later this evening. All right. Next, we have a proposed revision to policy DJ, district purchasing. It's a second reading. Any comments on that? All right. Next, we have. Second. Proposed revisions to uh, policies IGDF, uh, student fundraising. Activities, any comments on that? Um, JED, student absences and excuses. I think I had a comment on that. Anybody? I did too. Okay, go ahead, Tim. I just wondered, um, and I know some of this came from the legislature and stuff, but why did we take the parent piece out of this one? I think that was what I had. The policy before it read, it is the student's responsibility, or it is the responsibility of a student and yeah. his or her parents that the student maintain regular attendance and this is proposing to strike the parent part out of that and I just wondered why that is because it seems like I would like to see the parent piece stay in there. It's important. The parents have a good a fair share. It's not totally the student's responsibility, especially for little kids. Absolutely. I was even going to add into that, keep that and then add in guardians. It mentions guardians down below. Mm -hmm. So parents and guardians. The best I can assume is that uh, it was possibly done to eliminate some redundancy uh, in the policy since it is referred to down below, but I, I'm certain there is nothing that would keep you from maintaining that language in there. Yeah, I'm with Tim. I'd, I'd like to keep it, just to make, make it very clear. Absolutely. Okay, uh, next is uh, J, JFC, Student Conduct and Discipline. Um, JG. Student discipline, I think I had something on that. Anybody else have something? <coughs> oh, in the tail end of the uh, policy, um, it says when an out-of-school suspension is imposed on a student in fifth grade or lower. Why, is that, why was that added? That's now state law. That's language that uh, requires that we specifically uh, revisit the patterns of behavior for any student who is experiences suspension of any sort in the fifth grade or lower. Uh, really, I think with the intent to do everything possible to eliminate suspension. With, with the exclusion of fifth grade and higher? Not with the exclusion of, exclusion of fifth or sixth grade and higher, no. No, absolutely not. I, but, but the law is specific to and uses the phrase fifth grade. Okay. Uh, and so this policy reflects fifth grade. And I think, well, the intent of, of the, the policy and the, lo the law uh, was to, uh, again, do everything we can to keep students in school. And, and I think at times, it, uh, and I really don't believe that Silver Falls School District is, uh, is guilty of this, but there are, uh, uh, my sense is that there were uh, behaviors or decisions made in some school districts where very young students were suspended and insufficient consideration given to uh, full analysis of the matter, corrective measures, uh, and re reflection on, on what it takes to support those students in the school setting. So that's, I believe, what, what your legislature came up with. And um, yeah. 
Okay, so it reflects directly into the law. It does. Law, then. All right. Um, JHCCF, head lies. I can't say that word, so. <laughs> no, I don't know what that word is. I thought you were smiling. <laughs> no, say um, it again. Ridiculous. Thank you. And, and I, that, don't, I don't have a problem with this, but I was just curious why we used, if, if a kid was found with, with lies, why we used to send them to get them home right away. And this, this changes that to they won't be booted out till the end of the school day. Sure. Pretty much. I just wondered why that was. I mean, I don't have, it's not a big deal to me. But. The, um, the recommendation uh, comes from the American Pediatric Association. And, and again, similar to my previous comments, I, I believe the intent was for school districts to, with, within policy, do everything they can to keep students in school mm -hmm. as much as possible, and especially the students with, and it's, it's, we have more of a, uh, I think, a frequency of, of head lice in our, our primary or intermediate grades than yeah. we do in older grades, right? So uh, with that said, uh, again, I think there have been some cases where exclusion from school has been pretty significant for students with head lice based upon uh, the, uh, uh, the, the, the number of uh, adult lice that are found uh, in a student or the fact that they're there. Where the American Pediatric Association will say that the uh, but the spread of, of head lice uh, is, is uh, not necessarily with the student being present in a classroom or somewhere in the school. In other words, the head lice don't jump, right? I mean, it's based upon contact of some sort, physical contact, student to student, student to close, close to close, uh, that would cause that to occur. And it also puts us in a position to say, what are we doing to help the best best address the policy. You have some administrative rules specific to uh, uh, addressing uh, head lice within your school and they and they, there is even a, a metric placed on it. I, I can't cite it specifically but I think it's two or three students found in any particular classroom will require checking of the entire class and notification to parents and so forth. I think generally we do a pretty good job with it but in this case it, this is an additional piece to, to help us maintain the attendance of students by something that is um, based upon the American Pediatric Association, um, maybe not as contagious is the only word that comes to mind as, uh, as maybe some would think. Well, once, it, once the student's identified, it can be managed throughout the day and then take care of that evening. Absolutely. And, and, and I think it also, uh, excuse me, there's one more comment, um, Mr. Chair, I think it gives mm -hmm. al also an opportunity for school to become resourceful within the building about what that looks like. It may not be in the best interest to have that student uh, stay within the classroom setting and maybe an alternative uh, place or activity for that student to participate in, again, through the rest of the day as they work with parents and families to help the best address the situation. Thanks, Ed. Okay, so I was just going to ask for clarification, you were just touching on that. So they may or may not be removed from the class depending on... That's correct. Yeah, that's correct. And okay. we have uh, very well qualified nurses who assist us with this program. Oh, so, yeah. All right, next we have proposed new policy uh, GBMA whistleblower. It's the second reading. It's one we've been working on for, I think, a couple months now. Yeah. And legal, legal counsels looked at this. Any questions or comments on this one? All right, we'll move on to administrator staff reports. Andy. You have several things there. Yeah, I do have a few things, and I'll make this as brief as possible. I, this is not on the agenda, but I do want to just take a moment and thank all of the members of the audience for being here this evening uh, for what is a, um, uh, a, a, a very challenging situation within our uh, Silverton High School, within our school district this week, and I appreciate the input. I've received multiple emails. I know uh, Mr. Llewellyn, and phone calls. I know Mr. Llewellyn has as well. Uh, and, and I'll cut right to the chase. I, I want to affirm uh, to the audience, to those watching on television tonight as well, that this is distinctly not a not a one and done situation. We're taking this matter very seriously. Uh, um, uh, racial discrimination, discrimination of any sort is not acceptable in any of our schools. Uh, we know we have some work to do specific to this matter. We know we have some work to do as we move ahead, but this will be a continuous effort by all of us. Uh, I appreciate the information that we've received. Uh, admittedly, it's, it's happened very quickly, very emotionally, uh, and it's something that <coughs> we continue to say, how best do we address this? So some questions tonight about what specifically is the plan as we move ahead, uh, what I can tell you is that we are seeking uh, 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 
quite a few resources to help to support Silverton High School and the school district as we move ahead. This is not ending tonight. This is not ending as of late last week. We're going to continue to do that ahead. I appreciate Mr. Llewellyn's efforts. Uh, he had a, a full a meeting with his all of his staff members today. I know he's had administrative meetings. Uh, we have additional parent meetings set up and efforts to make this uh, correct. We have a job to do, uh, and I give you my word and my commitment as a school community uh, that we're going to get this job done, and I wanted to share that with each of you as well. Thanks, Andy. You bet. Uh, uh, so a couple of uh, very quick reports. Uh, we have a school and district report card uh, specific to school, Silver Falls School District and each of our respective schools, which will be released during parent-teacher conferences on Monday and Tuesday of next week. There'll be a, a access online and, and hard copies could be available uh, by, uh, at each of the schools within the district. Uh, parents should expect those. I've uh, given each one of you a hard copy in your packet. Uh, and if you haven't had a chance, I do encourage you to take a look at it. Uh, our, uh, our school uh, report card shows quite a few things specific to demographics of our school district, to the makeup of our school district, students, staff members as well, in addition to performance information, uh, academic uh, uh, information, as well as graduation uh, information. There are a lot of very, very uh, um, good pieces of information on our school and district report card. As you've heard from me in the past, I'm especially proud of our increasing graduation rate. Uh, I'm especially proud of our academic performance uh, in improvement in math and, and reading, especially at the middle school and the high school levels, which saw some significant jumps uh, as compared to two years ago. We still have some work for uniformity across the district. We still have quite a bit of work uh, related to getting all of our subgroups, including our special education, uh, ELL, uh, and um, uh, free reduced population to an, an increasing amount to get that graduation rate of course which is our ultimate measure uh, up to 100 percent which is one of your uh, core values with the strategic plan of the Silver Falls School District. Uh, I want to comment briefly on uh, Butte Creek School and Victor Point School seismic uh, re rehabilitation projects. Uh, we have a member of ZCS Engineering in the audience to see Kevin. Hi Kevin, we haven't met before so thank you for raising your hand. Uh, and uh, we are, are, are moving ahead with both. Uh, you have in front of you the uh, exemption from competitive bidding for uh, uh, CMGC use for Victor Point specifically tonight. Uh, and I encourage your approval of that resolution. Uh, I, uh, we have everything in place for Butte Creek. Uh, school. I have the contractor on board and shortly after the beginning of the school year we plan to be very active uh, with that project to be certain that we can take full advantage of plenty of competitive competition specific to that project. Uh, Victor Point will begin shortly after that. Uh, I'm encouraging uh, you, uh, we'll be bringing a recommendation to you, excuse me, for a contractor at your December 19th work session. And again, we generally don't take action. I don't ask you to take action during work session, but I do believe that the time sensitive nature of approval of, of a contractor for this project is necessary, which would allow us to really get uh, things moving uh, into January and February of the school year as we get that contractor on board. Uh, so I'll remind you again about that next month, but I want to make that available, or excuse me, make the information available to the public so they're aware as well. Uh, we have um, uh, some uh, uh, activity beginning at Victor Point even this week where we have an engineer who will be on site to begin, do, begin doing some uh, core sampling uh, location, or not core sampling, but location of where core sampling will occur and some additional analysis of the building um, in anticipation of getting that project going. Uh, I want to briefly comment on the um, uh, November 8th uh, election results, especially those specific to ballot measures, uh, uh, ballot measures 98, uh, excuse me, and 99, uh, which uh, were both approved by the voters of Oregon, uh, which will have uh, an impact on, on our school district. There are still, uh, there's still some pieces of information that need to come together, especially specific to uh, ballot measure uh, 98 and the ruling of that. That's the, the ballot measure that uh, approved designated funding for uh, career and technical education courses, uh, uh, dropout prevention uh, um, uh, activity within each, of the, each school district, uh, and also uh, uh, college uh, credit opportunities for, uh, for high school students. And so as a school district, we still have to sort out exactly what that means, but we need some additional direction from the Department of Education. And we've been given uh, some information already that that uh, direction will be coming uh, soon. I think it is fair to say that uh, the dollars, which equate to about $800 per ADM, it's uh, average daily membership of our, of our uh, student body, uh, will, will result in just under about a million dollars, which will be designated uh, that we're required to 
to use so for those three goals within our within our high school. I think there are some questions and middle school, by the way, uh, uh, grades. So there there is some question about what that means for us from a budget preparation standpoint, especially as we move into the winter and spring with some unknowns. Uh, with uh, we have a legislative session that's gearing up uh, to begin uh, very soon. Uh, we also have uh, everything from co collective bargaining. Uh, we know what the likely PERS imp impact or estimated PERS impact will be for the district, but whether there'll be any PERS reform from, from the legislature or not. Just a variety of still unknowns about what that's going to mean from a funding standpoint. And the reason I mention those is we won't know the true impact on the school district of what measure 98 will be until some of these other items become better known. So I, I wish I could give you more specific direction at this point, other than Measure 98 does designate those dollars for school districts to use for those three purposes. And then Measure 99 is the uh, ballot measure approved to provide outdoor education funding uh, for students in fifth grade or fifth and sixth grade, I think, initially. And um, uh, again, some, some ruling uh, specific to use of those dollars will need to occur. Those will not be uh, specific to state school fund dollars. Those will be coming from, I believe, uh, from lottery funds. I believe they're currently undesignated lottery funds, but I could be mistaken on that. But they are from lottery dollars to use for that purpose. So that's a very brief update uh, about what I'm aware of specific to those two ballot measures which I wanted to share with you tonight. Thanks, Andy. Getting back to the report card, maybe in a future uh, work, work session we could go through and dig through some of the details on sure. these and, and sure. uh, understand, really get a good understanding of what's, what's going well in our schools, what isn't, what, what are we doing to help improve, um, get, get in some of the details. You bet. Okay. We'll plan on that, Wally. And on measure, on measure 98, I heard some people talking about it at the school board convention this last weekend and um, one thing is that was brought up is they weren't sure if it, yet if, if it was going to be, you know, the eight hundred dollars per per ADM. Have you heard any more about that? Or I hadn't heard any conversation was, otherwise. I, heard, I forget what they said it was going to be based on, but, oh, okay. but they didn't know if it was going to amount to that much. And also for, um, you know, some of it is designated for CTE programs, but some of the people I heard talking about it were saying it was for new, new CTE programs only, or new, um, and it made me, you know, that caught my attention because we have a pretty robust CTE. Right. Yeah, it would be very fair. CTE department, or new programs within your CTE, within the CTE setup you already have. Have you heard any? Thing along those lines? I, I have not heard anything with that uh, about that that specific example. I know there is some confusion and ruling is required on this related to the dollars being used for dropout prevention programs and support in schools that are currently funded with federal dollars, specifically Title I dollars. That that if those dollars are used to fund c programs that are currently funded through f Title I federal dollars, that, that the new $98 cannot be used to supplant that. That's a federal law. You can't, if you have existing programs in your school for whatever purpose it is, and those are Title I dollars, federal dollars that are used for that purpose, the law doesn't allow you to uh, uh, supplant that those are specific to school improvement, especially around reading and math. So that may be what you heard, Tim. I may be making it more complex than what you, you heard, but yeah. that's the only thing that comes to mind for me. Well, they were, they were talking about the new CD programs or new, um, maybe like new avenues within your CTE programs that you already have. New, new programs or new, I'm not, it was, it was kind of vague right now, sure. I think. I think sure. nobody really knows yet, but, but I was just, not that we wouldn't get any money from that because we already have a CTE program because I think we could, we could from what I understood, we could still qualify with new, new stuff, if that's even the case. That's my understanding as well. Yeah. That would support current programs and new programs. Yeah. 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 Okay. Just be more work for Steve to track the dollars. That's a fact. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, any other questions for Andy before we move on? All right, Jennifer, the Great American Eclipse. Yeah, I just have about two minutes to give you an intro to what we're doing with the eclipse. You may recall a while back, Dr. Kayser came and said, hey, let's have a focus on the eclipse. So I actually got a call from our STEM hub coordinator. Um, STEM is a science, technology, engineering, mathematics program that we're connected with up in Wilsonville through OIT. And um, he said, hey, this is kind of a long shot, but NASA is putting together a program to film this eclipse 
um, from high altitude. They, did, they have filmed one other eclipse in 2012, but never real time, near time from high altitude. So they're going to try and do it this time using um, STEM teams, essentially. And we will range from 20 to 52 STEM teams that will follow the path of the eclipse. We happen to be in the path of totality. So he said, would you guys be interested in putting together one of these teams? And thinking back to Dr. K's offer to help make that happen, I said, sure, let's do it. Um, and then graciously, the Silverton High School Science Department and um, the astronomy teacher in particular said, absolutely, we'll help with that. So they're working on putting together a student team. We're getting um, an $8,000 kit from NASA to build the camera equipment. We'll do two test launches prior to the eclipse. And then on the day of the eclipse, they will launch this high altitude balloon that will bounce images back to NASA so that we can broadcast the eclipse for those who are not in the path of totality um, across the nation. So a few bonuses for Silverton High School and K-8 World in that is um, getting kids a real life experience in science. We have the opportunity to design our own experiment to go up with the balloon. We have to send NASA film equipment up, obviously, but it can take up to 10 pounds up, so we can send another secondary um, project up. So that's in the works to design that. And then it gives us a great opportunity for education for our K-8 kids of um, what they're going to be seeing, that it will be a once in a lifetime event for them, that they will get to watch it live, and then provide opportunities for them to view it in our, in our town. So great. the first balloon goes up off the Oregon coast. We're balloon number two. And then balloon number three will be in Idaho, which is actually put together <coughs> by a team from Alaska is coming down to launch that one. Yeah, we're the only K-12 team in Oregon. But wow. We're not worried. Okay, it's all so under control. We're, we're, one, we're one out of three balloons that NASA's sent no, up No, the they're going to try cameras. between um, 20 and 52, the whole path across the United States. Oh, I see. But um, just one off the coast of Oregon, ours, and then we jump to Idaho next. So no, no pressure. Yeah. That's, a lot of, that's a lot of pressure. That's a lot of pressure. It'll be fine. Yeah. Um, yeah. But well, the, the high school science team is on it. They, they've got it under oh, control. Yeah. Mr. Helms is working very hard with the astronomy classes. And they've opened it up to um, all of the high school kids who are interested in working on the team. I mean, obviously, it'll work through the summer. There's some test launches in July. And then the real launch for filming is uh, August 21st. It'll take about two and a half hours for it to get to near space altitude. Um, wow, it goes up that high. 100,000 feet, yeah. How long does it film, do you know? How long does it film? Yeah. Uh, two hours. Wow. Yeah. That is really cool. It's, yeah. Thank you for putting that together. Yeah. I can't take credit. High School Science Department. I just volunteered Well, I mean the, yeah. They're doing the work. Yeah. The logistics, yeah, I know. Yeah. That's going to be, that's, well, very sure, cool. that's, that's a great that's opportunity. That's a good opportunity. I'm sure Dr. K will be involved as much as you'll have as well. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> he was the first person I called. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Okay, Stop. that's cool. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Great, this sounds wonderful. All right, Steve, financial report. Yeah, top that, Steve. Hi. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to be able to top that one. Uh, <laughs> the financial statements through October are included in your packet, and the, the general fund continues to track to budget just, uh, just fine. We'll start to see the property tax collections kick in in November and December. Mm -hmm. The one thing I really wanted to point out tonight was on page three in the insurance fund, you'll see a uh, revenue of $23,300. and. That represents our uh, safe uh, premium dividend uh, uh, that we just received here last week, well, at the end of October. And that represents almost a quarter of our uh, workers' compensation premium from last year. So that's nice to get, uh, get some money back from, from that. Safe, as a, since it's a publicly held entity, they're required to return at the end of the year after they uh, get their financials done to the, to the membership. So That's great. Is, yeah. is that... Uh, or communicated to the staffs and your safe work practices result in these savings for us? We, ha we haven't yet. We've done that in the past, mm -hmm. but uh, we do need to celebrate that yeah. again. Absolutely. Won't. We'll make that a point. Any other questions or comments on the financial report? All right. Move on to Jamie McCarty. Yeah.
board chair and school board, thanks for having me uh, tonight. It's nice to be able to see you a couple times a year and uh, let you know what's going on in K-8 land and, and uh, little extra excitement in the air tonight. It's first night of girls basketball, uh, so big night in the McCarty household. Um, just a little bit, uh, have some uh, school goals I'd like to discuss with you tonight and really just focus on our school goal number one, which is uh, the third page, student learning will be our number one priority. So at Victor Point and Evergreen, uh, just starting to get to know Evergreen and the staff and students. Uh, it, is, it has been a nice transition and uh, the community, the school, the kids uh, ha has been a wonderful start for me uh, for the school year and for both schools. Uh, but tonight I just want to focus on student learning and I tried to, you know, I knew we were going to discuss a little bit the state report card coming up and, and uh, the schools in our district have been working extremely hard going from the Oaks state testing to the SBAC state testing and what that means for our kids and the rigor and the, the climate and the, the way that we have to teach our students. And what I wanted to show you tonight's the work that both schools have done at Victor Point and Evergreen. Um, just commend the staff, the kids, our parents. Um, you know, it's a, it's a state test that, you know, everyone, and you know, there's some panic there. There's some, a uh, lot, of, lot of extra effort that goes along with that. And so that, that third page under SBAC results, language arts, Victor Point, 14-15, uh, that's the first school year we took it. 15-16 was last year. Kind of gives a state of Oregon and a Silver Falls uh, percentage. And I'm not going to go through every bit of percentage with you, but hopefully you'll take a look and look it over on the, on the results of, of both schools and our kids and our community. Um, but just going through that, uh, and, and as we go, the next page is math, Victor Point, uh, 14, 15, 15, 16, the same all the way through. What I really want uh, to, to really look at and commend is as the kids get older, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth, it gets harder and harder for kids to meet that rigor of that state uh, of, of the SBAC. And, um, you know, both schools haven't missed a beat. And as the kids get older, we're not losing any students to grade level or SBAC or what our kids are held account of, uh, accountable for. Um, and, and if you look, uh, it goes into the language arts. And where I really want you to pay attention to, if you would, was is the the grade level cohorts because that really looks apples to apples and that is kids year to year. So that very first one is language arts grade level co cohorts Victor Point. And so for third grade 1415 that cohort was 95 percent. 95 percent of those students met the SBAC. As fourth graders 100 percent met. So if you look across the difference, if you can get a 0% difference every year, that is a celebration. That means you did not lose a kid from third grade to fourth grade, and you kept the same amount of kids at grade level moving forward. I think what you'll notice at both of these schools is not only their first year test scores very, very high, um, uh, safe to say upper 5% in the state of Oregon, not only were they high, they went up in every grade level or, or remained the same. So, you know, and really looking at that, uh, Victor Point went up 5% from 95 to 100, 62 to 77, a 15% increase, 80 to 92. Uh, so increases all the way down. If I could afford color, you'd see all those in green, uh, which is a pretty sight on the computer. Not as pretty on black and white. Math, if you look at math, that same third grade went from 76 to 96% of our students met. 20% uh, increase, a big celebration, 66 to 66, stayed the same, 5 and 9 and 12. Evergreen, the same thing, but I just want to look at the cohorts. Uh, math went from 60 to 75%, 15% increase, 50 to 88%. In fourth grade, a 38% increase, 63 to 88, 25%. And seventh and eighth, the hardest places, same at Victor Point, to stay the same or usually go down in any place, those remained at 83 and 71. And I think that what, what we can say about our staff and our, and our parents and our communities is there is some pride in our education. There is pride 
um, we talk a lot about in both schools that this is a competitive approach. We are competitive in our schools. We are competitive. We want to have the best third grade out there. We want to have the best third grade teacher out there. And if we're not competitive, we're, we're going to lose some kids. So we have to look at every one of those kids come in. Every teacher has that data. After every star testing, we're meeting with data team. We're looking at every kid. And we can tell you that not one of those students are slipping through the cracks at either school. Um, and I think that shows with that data. So we just wanted to, to share that with you. And, and just the, the staffs are uh, working, working very hard. Same thing, last one at Evergreen Language Arts. 23% increase. We remain the same, 37%. And seventh and eighth grade did not lose a student. I gave you a couple handouts just on attendance. And again, I'm not going to go through those all, but uh, it has been a district goal, our student attendance, 95%. So throughout the year, we do some attendance challenges with our students. That is just the first 30-day attendance challenge that I kind of showed you at both. Um, Victor Point started off with a 90, if you look at the overall 2016, a 97.46 attendance average uh, in the first month. And Evergreen School ended with a 98.35. And I've never seen this before, but at Evergreen, they had 100% attendance for the first week of school. Usually, you know, you're going to have still a vacation. You're going to have someone out sick. 100% um, of the kids every single day. And we know how we start the years, how, we're gonna, how our year is going to go. So that first 30 days is super important. So we put a lot of emphasis on that. And our parents are really starting to understand when to get appointments and really trying to make efforts to get them after school, before school, PLCs, late starts, uh, and, and really proud of the kids' effort to get to school. And I kind of gave a comparison. You'll see it more on Evergreens. In, in 2015, their first 30 days was 97.1. And with a concerted effort there, this year we are 98.35. So you don't think a 1%, 1.5% 1 attendance, that, that's huge in school attendance. Um, so just a little something there. And then just a couple celebrations and a couple things uh, and a couple hurdles that we're facing. Uh, that the celebrations at both schools would be our EPTC at Evergreen and our, and our parents and our, our community and the same at Victor Point, our PTCC at Victor Point. Um, you talk about a group of people that come together every day to give our kids extra. It's those two groups. Um, Evergreen needs a new play structure. And, and uh, you know, first thing that hit me there was, hey, we need a new play structure. And uh, it's not easy. I mean, uh, the one that they chose was about $26,000. Well, in 30 days, uh, Evergreen schools raised $25,000. Uh, wow. with, a, with a school of 83 kids. Um, just, you know, a fundraising letter went out and, and the parents, the students, and the teachers pulled together and, and made it happen. Uh, the Pi Social, another 5,000. So in 30 days, we're talking that amount of money for that school of 83 for a new playground structure. Hopefully it'll be there after they get uh, back from uh, Christmas break. Same thing with Victor Point. Our, our PTC has started to join with our school, and now we're working both together with our technology. So with their funds and our school funds, we can put a package together. We put a couple three-year leases together where we've put an iPad in every K2's hands and a Chromebook in every 3 through 8 hands. Um, our school goal, both professional goal, I put last on the celebrations as a professional development goal, is our staffs are focusing on how to use technology in the classroom and not only use technology, but we have so many different levels of kids. In a second grade, we might have a fourth, fifth grade reader and we might have a kindergarten level student uh, at their level. The only way we can challenge those students at their level is through technology. A teacher in front of 28 students cannot <coughs> effectively at all times challenge but there's so many programs out there small group instruction we can get and uh, so RPTC at Victor Point has worked with us has just with all their fundraisers 25 30,000 a year we have we were able to get all of that into our kids hands uh, this last year so super excited uh, just about the community pride that we have and you know there's always going to be challenges 
And right now I think our biggest two challenges is when you have high test scores, how do you stay competitive? It's like a coach that just won a national championship. We're not settling. We're, we're reloading. We're coming back. How do we stay competitive? How do we stay there? And that's going to be the toughest is how do we keep setting goals? Once you get to a certain amount and you've got to keep setting goals higher, it's hard to, it's hard to hit. And I think that's a challenge. And then now that we do have so much technology in our hands, number one, it's expensive. It breaks. How do we take care of it? And then how do we set the expectation that every kid, that we are, we are purposefully designing instruction in class to move every kid with that technology? And so we've set a lot of goals in our school around different ways that we can make it meaningful and impact our students. Very good. Any questions for Jamie? I'll, uh, I'll make a little shameless plug. My, my kids <laughs> go to Evergreen, and uh, two, they still go to Evergreen, and I just want to commend Jamie for his efforts here, and just you've been a breath of fresh air at, at Evergreen and your direction to the staff and the, the students. I mean, it was contagious, and, and it was noticeable uh, like the first day. So uh, thank you for your efforts and your leadership there. I appreciate it. How are your facilities? I, I know we've had some problems with the gym roof leaking. Is that fixed? No. You know, uh, depends on how severe the rain is. Uh, I think there's some flashing. A lot of work has been up there. A lot of uh, attention has been placed there. Uh, but it, I think it depends on, you know, I think when the wind catches it right and some flashing mm -hmm. and some things that happen just on roofs, you know, it's a pretty old roof. And they don't make them like that anymore, so they're hard to repair. Uh, but I think a lot of efforts there, and, and okay, trying to get those. Any other facilities issues at the, at the two schools that you're concerned about? You know, when you have schools that old, there's always issues. <laughs> there's always issues. The, you flush the handle, it goes for 10 minutes. You you got to take a hammer and bang on the metal thing, and it causes some dust particles to go down, and you just know how to take care of it. You know. Um, Sign but the, really down. Down, yeah, so, that's right. So yeah, and we're replacing a window at Evergreen, and it's so old that it. I'm not sure how we're going to replace it. They're going to get it replaced, <laughs> but you know. So there, you're right. always going to come across stuff like that, but there's nothing, nothing ongoing nagging, though. No. Okay. Yeah, the kids and the teachers inside make the school, not not the. Great. Not the. So. All right. Thanks, Jamie. Thanks, Jamie. Okay. Next, Jake. We have Marie Tra uh, Traeger. Miranda Traeger, sorry. Thank you so much for having us come and speak with you guys again this year. Um, I'll highlight a few things that are kind of going on with us and then I'll pass it over uh, to one of our students. Um, uh, looking um, towards the future, um, we're very excited that uh, um, our charter contract allows us to kind of move into middle school, and so this year we're exploring the option of expanding into a seventh and eighth grade. So we're kind of diligently looking into those options and making sure it's the best fit for our school. But just kind of a heads up, we're moving in that direction. We're very excited about that. We have implemented full day kindergarten for the first time this year, and it's really wonderful. Absolutely, um, first I think few days were a little bit interesting but then it kind of sorts itself out with all that um, a couple new components um, last year we kind of uh, redid our report cards to kind of mirror a little bit more of what the Silver Falls School District is putting out there and to, uh, more accurately reflect some common core uh, so give some families some indications as to how they're doing based on their, their peers out there but the wonderful thing about what we're going to do and hopefully uh, have a nice little pretty package to be able to show you for next year is that Montessori does so much more than just kind of the academic common core outputs and so what we're looking at is we're going to be implementing a new um, assessment tool um, to focus just on the Montessori outcome element so that we can kind of give a, a view as to how we're kind of doing in the Montessori realm within that. And so we're excited that um, we're going to get to um, report out on how our kids are doing with initiation, how they're doing with concentration, how they're doing with their inhibitory controls, how they're doing with their working memory, how they're doing with their linguistic and cultural fluency, and how they're doing with their social fluency and emotional uh, flexibility. So those are kind of the core of what Montessori is all about, and I'm really excited to be able to be able to report out to our board, to our parents, and then also out. Um, uh, it's kind of an exciting model that would be wonderful to be able to filter out um, into more of the mainstream element as well. But um, 
So yeah, so those are kind of some new elements that are, are filtering <coughs> through uh, for us. And then I'll turn it over. Well, before you do oh, that, sure. how, how's your new facility working out for you? Oh, <laughs> yes. The facility is wonderful. It's, uh, um, it is delightful. It is a little bit smaller than what we kind of uh, were kind of uh, were used to, but at the same time, the it's amazing to be able to walk out into this little courtyard area, and we have benches that are set out, and students are reading, and it's really nice to have them outside. The natural lighting is really wonderful. The relationship with the church has been a really wonderful element. So it has been a really nice, wonderful move for us, um, and one that we're excited that there looks like there's some long-term components to it. And so I think that our community is kind of like <sighs> we're just a breath that's coming so it's 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 very wonderful we've been very appreciative of the flexibility that the staff has kind of given and the board has given it to us kind of housing us from space to space to be able to get to this established spot so thank you so much for all that flexibility to move into good. that so yeah thank you all right <laughs> okay so I my name is Christian Davis and I'm a sixth grader at Community Roots and Personally, I really enjoy this school because we have an opportunity to do something different and um, we are able to go places as a, of a research or something that we enjoy and we do as a choice. We can go places that are related, saying, if somebody was really interested in art, then they could probably pull together a trip to the art museum in Portland, and it's just like they, all of the teachers and guides and staff members, they have a, a lot of trust in us, and it's like I feel able to I don't know how to put it. Um, I feel able to just be able to be myself at this school too because I am able to show my, some people say brilliant math mind to work and it's, it's good to be able to do what I want to do and the person next to me, they could be doing something completely different, and I personally love that, and that's kind of why I love Montessori, and yeah, so thank you. Thank you. So I'll just point out that Christian is definitely a very brilliant child, um, but she's also has this amazing leadership quality. So I'm, for my own children, um, immensely grateful for her leadership skills in, the, in this classroom setting, so yeah, excellent. All right. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very you. much Thanks for your time. For Appreciate it. Any questions? Thank oh, thanks for coming. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. Uh, next is uh, board reports. Anybody? We had the uh, OSBA uh, convention this last weekend. Any any comments or? Yeah, that? a couple real quick things. Um, one thing I'm, that always hits me, and I'm always very impressed by when I go to these some of these conventions, is they have breakout meetings and different school districts and different organizations um, present on different topics and a lot, <clears throat> it seems like every year I go and I go to a couple of them and I go to these things that sound really, really cool and I get there and I'm like, well, we're already doing that. You know, and that's one thing that I'm always impressed by is in our district how, how much stuff we're doing and we're kind of on the forefront of a lot of things. And one example, I went to one um, this weekend that talked about seven steps for increased student achievement or something and they were talking about rubrics and all this stuff and it's a stuff we're, we're already doing in our, in our district. So that always makes me really proud to know that, to know that you know, we're taking the lead in a lot of this stuff and we have such good staff that they're already, they're already on the, working on this stuff and <coughs> moving forward with it. And, but a couple other things that I, um, <clears throat> that I took in is I went, I heard a lot about um, opportunities for kids and meeting, uh, creating new opportunities for kids and especially around CTE areas and things like that. And, <clears throat> and sometimes it doesn't have to be real complicated. I went to a presentation from an ESD in Douglas County and they, um, they were doing a lot of things around, um, around trying to get programs where, you know, to present 
weld into girls and things like you know different things like that different career different career paths that these kids might be able to take and you know CNA programs or nurses assistant programs and letting guys know that, that they can go into that stuff and um, they talked about counseling for the kids just to make kids really aware and um, and they one other example they gave was for well they were the welding for the girls program they were they were seeing girls start but no but they weren't finishing the program. And they, one of the things they nailed, it, they nailed it down on was girls would go in there and the gloves wouldn't fit them right, the welding gloves, and the helmets wouldn't fit right. And they got, they got some of the you know, smaller sizes of equipment to fit the girls, and the girls were like, hey, we can do this now. And so it just real, you know, it doesn't have to be anything major, just some real simple things that might, might increase participation with that. I know that's one thing that we're, that we're all kind of always looking at as a district is more opportunities for kids around career related career related things and CTE things and some stuff like that. So that was kind of encouraging and and I'll, you know there was one speaker on Saturday morning I think who was really good I'd like to hear his talk again but talked about meeting kids where they're at and it doesn't have to be a real complicated thing you know put your best teacher in in your with your lowest with your lowest kids in a math class or something like that. Just, just simple things, just being real attentive to where kids are. And, and it's something that, you know, we do really well in this district already, but things we can always improve on too. So it was just kind of neat to hear some of that stuff. Thanks, Jim. And um, OSBA has a leadership institute thing they, they, they conduct where um, board members can get, um, get credit for classes they take, online classes and for meetings they go to. And, he will never say anything about it, but our own Ron Valoff got a bronze award. <laughs> He'll kill me for saying that, but that's, but that's, really, but that's really pretty cool. Because to, to get to that level of, you know, and it, you know it's good for, it, for us board members to go and get some education and some stuff like this and some training, and Ron's done more than any of us, so that's awesome. Still got my training wheels on. <laughs> Thanks, Tim. Yeah, thanks, Tim. I, I spent Friday there and went to the uh, um, attorneys workshop, school attorneys workshop. Heard, heard about some several items of, of concern. I actually wrote a letter to our uh, representatives on to see if we can get some changes made. One is regarding uh, recreational immunity. There's, there's been a loophole that's been found that uh, by having the public use our facilities, there's, there's an opportunity for them to sue us if uh, something happens on there. Um, by, by suing the individual rather than the public entity. Um, so there's some concern around that. Um, like I say, I, I wrote to our legislators to see if they can, can make some changes to the laws so we can be protected better. Some things around some of our uh, students that uh, we have to take special precautions with. Um, had, had several discussions about that. And we, there's also quite a bit of discussion about the Office of Civil Rights. I know we had, we've had some inquiries for the Office of Civil Rights here in this district, and it was, it was pretty appalling to hear some of the techniques that the federal government's been taking against school districts across, across the nation. Uh, bullying, not taking care, not uh, following their own procedures, um, not getting back went to, uh, when, when, when a school district responds to them, not, it takes up to, the story's up to five years for, uh, for the office to get back to them, to, to uh, tell them what they found, and then they want immediate feedback after that five years. So it's, it's pretty ridiculous. Um, they've said it uh, has really stepped up over the past eight years. You can read into that if you'd like. Um, also, uh, it was interesting. I was listening to, I'm kind of a newsaholic. I was listening to the, one of the Sunday morning shows, and George Will, who's, who's a syndicated col columnist, I may have not even noticed his, his comment if I wouldn't gone to this, this workshop, but he made a comment about how the uh, Office of Civil Rights have been operating across the United States over the last few years, too. And, and uh, so hopefully that will change. I, I know we have some, some inquiries out there we're waiting to hear back on. So we're not alone. Also, it's good to sit down with a few other board members. I sat down with some board members from Corbett and had a good conversation with another board member from Lowell, just kind of, kind of exchanging notes and, and learning about what other districts are up to and a little bit of back and forth on that. So it was good. I'll mention a couple of things. Uh, just one thing that, I, that the, our, our student representative missed uh, in terms of activity. I, I had a chance last week to take in a couple of showings of the uh, Silver Falls or the Silverton High School 
theater group is doing their rendition of uh, Neil Simon's Fools. So any of you uh, theater buffs, come on out. Uh, they're, they're showing again on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday this coming week, uh, 7 o'clock at the high school theater. Uh, I've seen, what, two or three shows already, and they get funnier every time. So the kids did a very, very good job, as, as, as always, with uh, Mr. O at the helm of, of, of the direction there. Uh, but I'd encourage you all to come out and support the, uh, the theater group because it's, it's, it's really entertaining, and this one is, is really funny. So, so you're saying attend one of the later showings? Oh, yeah, I, I, this weekend will be great because they've had a weekend under okay. their belt. So uh, they should, uh, everyone gets better and better. So yeah, come closing night, come on Saturday night. I think you'll be very entertained. Um, the last thing I would just want to, again, not to, not to kind of open up anything, but I want to, again, kind of piggyback on what Andy said about, you know, the, the testimony we heard about the issues that, that came up this past week, that, that this isn't one and done. And um, the thing I want to just implore all of us as, as, as community members that, we need continued feedback. Um, yeah, I think you've heard loud, and, or we've heard loud and clear tonight that this is something that we will continually visit as a board and discuss and ensure that there's accountability going both ways. And, and I welcome our community to keep us all accountable. Um, you know, we want to hear from you. We can only get better if we hear from you. And so please continue to, to, to check in. Please continue to, to offer, uh, come, come to our meetings and, 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 and let us know how things are going. Um, Andy and the staff does a wonderful job of, of, of listening and, and telling us what's going on. But again, we, we can only do it for, with, with great input, like we heard tonight. So let's keep the dialogue going. And uh, again, it's not a one and done thing. We need to hear from you continually. So again, thanks. In, in a moment, Ken. <laughs> thanks, Aaron. Anybody else? Okay, a correspondence. I think we've received a few emails. I'm not aware of anything else. Andy's okay. Now we'll move, go ahead and go into a second audience with visitors. Now's your chance. <laughs> yep, okay. come on up. Okay. Thank you. I can have a double take. You can. Wow. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Again, my name is Shelley Nealon. Um, I live at 425 Telecom here in Silverton. Um, I just wanted to take this opportunity to um, respond to a few of you who have verbally responded to us. Um, I can see that a few of you have not responded. Um, this is very important to us. This is the tipping point of a very long systemic history in this town. And, you know, Anyone can be bullied, anyone can be harassed, and be among people who will call them different names. You know, it's a good thing my children are blonde-haired, blue-eyed, and white, because they fit great in this town. But they sure didn't when they were Irish Catholics back in the 1700s. So I'm just telling you, we're not going away, we're here. We're going to be here to discuss solutions, ideas, come up with a better system of, to include everyone. We are positively coming back here for positive responses and positive solutions. And that's all I'd like to say. So thank you for your time. I do appreciate it. And anyone else that would like to come up is now the time. <laughs> if you didn't get a chance before. <laughs> Please do. Here, come on up. I don't want to come up. I, want to I, I need you to come up. <laughs> oh, okay. I just wanted to add that it's not just in the school that this is happening. And um, like last week, my daughter was walking home from guitar practice, and two high school boys, well, men, they were probably old enough to vote, seniors. Um, and their truck pulled up next to her and called her racial slurs. And, um, and so and she's 12. She doesn't even mm. go to high school. So it's not just at the schools. It's in throughout the town. And it's hard to hold the kids at the schools accountable when a member of your own board is online half the time bullying other people. So I just wanted to say that. Could you state your name and sign in? Oh, yeah. My okay. name's Holly Perez. So. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Oh, and one more thing. Um, 
No way. I think I said it. Okay. Anybody else? My name's Nassim Raka, and I live here in Silverton, and I have a son who's a junior. And um, I want to say, firstly, that I greatly appreciate our principal's immediate attention to this. Um, I learned about it through a robocall that we got um, Tuesday evening, and I asked my son immediately what happened. And he was, you know, he's vague, like a high school student tends to be. And um, he, he mentioned, well, there were trucks, and I think that there was conflicts, but he wasn't involved in the conflict. Um, but I think that the greater issue here is that we need to have a way to develop sympathy and empathy for one another, that we are in a world of hurt around the nation, in an, in an election that has used very vile language on both sides. And the students are just a microcosm of what's going on outside. And it's so difficult, I think, for teachers and for a culture in a school to say, well, what's happening outside is not the way we're going to behave in here, but that's exactly what we have to do. And so what I want to encourage the board to do is not just give us reassurances that things are going to change, but to give us specifics of how things are going to change. I think parents need to know what tools are teachers being given to help them communicate in these very difficult times, how do we get along? The fact of the matter is that the election is just the beginning. Our country is going through a very big change. And that as we approach an inauguration, this, these, the, the potential for greater conflicts will exist. And so I think this, these tools, whatever they are going to be, Mr. Bolando and the board, they need to be um, they need to be very, very tangible and very, very, um, f very, very strong and communicated to the parents. Whether they're messages in the school, whether they're communications, whether they're groups where the kids can get together and talk about their different points of view. I mean, I know that the, the, the white kids feel just as much pressure by the attention that's going on right now, some of them feeling like this is not justified. And I know that a lot of the Hispanic, particularly the Hispanic kids in our school feel afraid. And that empathy needs to be built. And I think it is absolutely the most important lesson that we can teach them this year. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank, you. Thank you. Anybody else? Uh, my name is John Yang. I'm a new resident, a newcomer to Silverton. And uh, about 35 years ago, I was also a newcomer to this country. I'm an immigrant. Um, super proud. We settled in this part of uh, western uh, New Jersey um, that, was actually, uh, that was actually very red. My, my first elementary school was called Richard Milhouse uh, uh, Nixon elementary school. So, mm -hmm. so uh, you know, we settled right there in, uh, in Republican country. Um, and the first, you know, didn't know any English. And the first thing that, that I learned how to say in English was this Pledge of Allegiance. Um, and, you know, in, in, this, in this school, what I remember, and I, I hope that my memory doesn't, doesn't lie to me, but what I remember was everyone from the teachers, the principal, the kids, were completely welcoming. You know, it, even, even in, in this area, in, you know, in that time, um, you know, they had, the teacher showed me that they had a stake in my education, and, and the, the kids, you know, they were curious, um, but they were never cruel. Um, and, 
And so, you know, I guess my point is that, you know, decency is not political. You know, civility is not political. Um, we we can do it in in and somehow, you know, between the kids being in elementary school and, and once they get to high school, you know, some of these kids they lose their way, um, and we have to figure out a, a way. Um, you know, starting from elementary school kids from early on to try to try to teach them, you know, that that you can, you know, you can welcome people and that you can, you know, treat people, uh, treat other kids, treat other people that don't look like you decently. Um, and it has nothing to do with your, you know, your political, what, political bent, whatever's happening else in this country. So I, I was super sad to hear about what had happened, the incidents. Um, but I, I think that, you know, this country has been in a lot better places before than we can get back there again. And, you know, the, the, what I love about this country is just the spirit of inclusion. I, I, I've always felt welcomed um, anywhere I went. I, I felt welcome here in, in Silverton. And, and really, that's what makes America great. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Anybody else? Hi, um, I'm Hannah Brown. I'm a freshman at Silverton High School. Um, I want to talk about the problem with kind of glossing over or ignoring what's going on. A few of my teachers, after they saw the articles that were being written, seemed a little distressed and they acted as though they were more concerned about the fact that Silverton was going to have this reputation of racism rather than the fact that people were actually feeling threatened and scared for their lives. I felt like they valued the reputation, or some, not just the teachers, but some people were valuing reputation over the well-being and happiness of our students and our friends. And I just want to make sure that we're not, it, like this doesn't go ignored and it doesn't go glossed over or totally justified. And I know that there are parts of it that can be like, I guess that were stretched or exaggerated, but by saying that not all of it happened or that a lot of it was stretched or that it's not really like that, we're really just adding to the ignorance or the systemic racism that's been going on in our country for a very long time, and we need to address it and put an end to it rather than, I guess, sugarcoating it or pretending like it didn't happen. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. Anybody else? Okay, I think we'll go ahead and move on then. We have some action items. Before we do, though, I'd like to really thank Justin. I know you've had a rough week, so thank, thanks for everything you've done and getting us through this. <laughs> All right, uh, first we have an action item, resolution number 1114, 2016, adopting exemption from competitive bidding for the use of CMGC for seismic rehabilitation project at Victor Point School. Do you have a motion? So moved. Moved. Is there a second? Second. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next is to cast a vote to approve Taz Morrison as uh, Oregon School Board Association Director for Position 11 for Marion mm -hmm. Region. Do we have a motion? So moved. Moved. Is there a second? Second. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Okay, and lastly, we have a uh, we're casting a vote to approve resolution adopting Oregon School Board Association 2017-18 legislative priorities. Do we have a motion on that? Move for approval. Second. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? I do have a couple of comments. I read through here. I think as a whole it's okay. I, I am concerned about uh, them trying to get their hands on the kicker and uh, pre-K programs. I don't think those are the right priorities for the OSBA, but as a whole, I think it, it's, a, it's a good document. 
So all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. All right, this time we'll go ahead and uh, adjourn our regular session and move into executive session per ORS 192-6602F to consider information on records that are exempt from law for public inspect inspection, consideration of sick leave banks. Thanks for coming.
All right, let's go ahead and move out of executive session back into regular session. Do we have a motion? Uh, I'll move to move to individually. You can, you can do it together. Okay, um, I'd like to make the motion to grant 25 days uh, sick, bay, um, uh, sick, bay, sick, leave, leave. sick leave to Leanne Arl and 10 days to Tricia Lynn Klaus. For Sick Leave Bank. For Sick Leave Bank, yes. I'll second that. Moved and second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Any further business? Seeing none, meeting is adjourned. Thank you.